Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we're going to look at addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division using complex numbers. And we'll start with addition and subtraction. And addition and subtraction are easily, most easily done when your numbers are in rectangular form like this. So if I have a number a plus jb, where a and b are just real numbers, and I want to add it to c plus jd, when the complex numbers are in rectangular form like this, it's really easy to do the addition. I just have to take the real parts, add them together, and the imaginary parts and add those together, and I'm done. And the reason this works so well, if you think about, let's, let's take a real example. Let's go 3 plus j4 as one of my complex numbers, and I'm going to add it to 6 plus j3. So in terms of what this looks like in the coordinate system, it's going to be three units this way in the real axis, and then four units that way in the imaginary axis. And this one is six units in the real axis, and three units in the imaginary axis. So what I end up with is the real parts adding together, three plus six, and then the imaginary parts adding together. So we have four and three which results in 9 in the real axis and 7 in the imaginary axis. So 3 plus j4 plus 6 plus j3 is equal to 9 plus j7. And subtraction works in a very similar way. I would combine the real parts. So I've got a plus jb minus c plus jd. So I'll have a minus c for my real part plus jb minus d for the imaginary part. And so as an example, if I have minus 4 plus j30 as one complex number, and I need to subtract 3 minus j10, well, it's going to be minus 4 minus 3 for my real part, plus j times 30 minus negative 10 for the imaginary part. And so this will work out to minus 7 plus j40. As a second example, I have minus 95 minus j100 minus negative 111 plus j30. So again, I take those real parts. I've got minus 95 minus negative 111 minus, oops, I should go plus, j times negative 100 minus 30. So this will work out to negative 95 plus 111 gives me 16 plus j times minus 100 minus 30, that's minus 130, or more commonly this will be written out as 16 minus j times 130. So addition and subtraction, very easy when you're dealing with rectangular coordinates. Now let's move on to multiplication. And multiplication can also be done in rectangular coordinates. So if we have a number, let's go 3 plus 2j times 4 plus 5j. Now all I need to do to do this multiplication is just expand out this, expand this out. So first times first, outside times outside, inside times inside, and last times last. So let's go through that process. Okay, so we start off with 3 times 4 gives me 12. 3 times plus 5j gives me plus 15j. 2j times 4 gives me 8j. And finally, 2j times 5j gives me 10j squared. So what I've got is 12 plus 23j plus 10j squared. Well, what is, what is j squared? If you remember, j is equal to the square root of negative 1. So j squared, then, is square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which simply equals negative 1. So what I end up with here is not plus 10, but it's actually going to be minus 10. So I end up with... 2 plus 23j. Fairly simple to do, 
just a, a, a few steps in the expansion of that multiplication. Multiplication of complex numbers is much easier though when you are in vector form or in the polar coordinate form. And I'm gonna convert these into polar coordinate form. You can check out my previous video on how to do, how to do that conversion. I'm not gonna do it here. But three plus two J is equal to root 13 with an angle of 33.7. And four plus five J is equal to root 41 with an angle of 51.3 degrees. So when you have your numbers in polar coordinates, it's very simple to do multiplication. What I do is I take the, is I take the magnitude part and I multiply those two together. So I'll get root 13 times root of 41. And then I take the angle, the angle is determined by the sum of the two angles. So the angle will be 33.7 plus 51.3. And I can work this all out to get a, a single number for this and a single number for this. And I end up with 23.09 with an angle of 85 degrees. And if I do the conversion from the rectangular coordinates there into polar coordinates, I end up with that exact same value. And finally, we're at division. And division can also be done when your numbers are in rectangular form like this, because remember, division is the same as multiplying by the inverse. The difference is, or the trick in, in when dealing with complex numbers, is that the inverse of this number, 4 plus 5j, isn't just 1 over 4 plus 5j. You actually, what, what you need to do to get the, to get the inverse of that is to multiply the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate of 4 plus 5j. And I'm not going to get into the details of what the complex conjugate is, but the complex conjugate, the, the definition of it is it has the same real value, but the inverse of the imaginary value. So this is the complex conjugate of 4 plus 5j. So to get the inverse of 4 plus 5j, I actually need to take that number 1 over 4 plus 5j and multiply both the top and the bottom by the complex conjugate. And what I end up with is 4 minus 5j over, well, to get the denominator, I need to expand this out. So I get 4 times 4 is 16. 5j, or 4 times negative 5j is minus 20j. 5j times 4j is plus 20j. And then I finally, I get plus 5j times negative 5j. I get negative 25 j squared. And remember, j squared is equal to negative 1. So what this is going to end up with will be 16 plus 25. So these minus, this minus 20j and this plus 20j, they're going to cancel out. And they end up with 16 plus 25 on the numerator. So ultimately, what this means is to get 3 plus 2j divided by 4 plus 5j, I can go 3 plus 2j times the times the inverse of that which is this value that we've just figured out so times 4 over 41 minus 5 over 41 j and again this multiplication is going to involve expanding out these two values so i end up with 3 times 4 over 41 that times that gives me minus 15 over 41 j and then 2j times 4 over 41, so 8 over 41j. And finally, 2j times minus 5 over 41j, minus 10 over 41j squared. Don't forget that squared part. So again, j squared is minus 1. So this term becomes plus 10 over 41. So my real parts are 12 over 41 and 10 over 41. So that gives me 22 over 41. And I've got minus 41, minus 15 over 41 J plus eight over 41 J minus seven over 41 J. And writing these out as a fraction, I get 0 0.54 minus 0 0.17 J. So that was a lot of work to do division when the numbers are in rectangular form like this. It's much easier when the complex numbers are in polar notation. And so I'm gonna, again, do the conversion 
Well, I've done the conversion already, and I'll give it to you as an exercise to do, to do the conversion if you want to, if you want some extra practice. But three plus two j is again root thirteen with a phase angle of thirty three point seven, and four plus five j is root forty one with a phase angle of fifty one point three. So for division, what we do is we divide the magnitude portion. So root 13 over root 41 works out to 0 0.56. And for the phase angle, what we do is we take the phase angle on the numerator and subtract the phase angle on the denominator. So in polar notation, the division of this value by this value is 0 0.56 with a phase angle of negative 17.6. And if you do the conversion of this one back to, back to the rectangular coordinates, you'll find that it is 0 0.533 plus, not plus, minus J0.17. So a little bit of rounding error that occurred here that I didn't quite get 0 0.54, but you can see that I've confirmed that the polar notation division is equal to the division when I do it in rectangular coordinates, as you would expect. It's just that when you are in polar coordinates, much easier to do the division. So I strongly recommend that you go check out the website in the links below. There's a lot more information about complex numbers, as well as more information about electrical and electronic circuits. There are lectures there, there's a textbook there, there's practice problems, all sorts of things to help you help you learn all these things about electrical and electronic circuits. I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. And in the meantime, stay focused and have fun.